Okay, well, hello everyone and uh, welcome to today's webinar. Here at Moderna, we are really pleased that you could be joining us where we will be discussing and speaking about what's new in Revit MEP on the plumbing side for the release version 2021. My name is Mike Bredenkamp and I am the Strategic Accounts Manager for Moderna Infrastructure in the construction and MEP space. And I'll be co-hosting this session for you today. During this week, we have been showcasing and hosting 10 webinars where we've been showing you all the new features available in the 2021 release versions. Uh, if you haven't already registered for the last few webinars this week, I have added a link to the comments box where you will still be able to register. The webinar will be recorded. It will be sent to you in the next day or so to recap on what we've covered today. And if you'd like to share it with any of your colleagues who haven't been able to attend, please feel free to do so. We'll also be able to get this uh, link on our website uh, where all the recordings will be hosted or you can actually go to our Modern Design Center's YouTube channel. If you have any questions during this webinar, please post your questions or comment in the chat box and one of our technical assistants will be able to answer it for you. And for those who are just joining us, welcome. So without delay, let me introduce you to today's presenter, Dino. Dino is one of Modern Infrastructure's application engineers whose specialized skills are in mechanical and wet services engineering. His product skill sets include Revit, AutoCAD, Navisworks, and BIM 360. His industry belief is knowledge and application of knowledge equals success. Now, before we get started with the presentation, we'd like to hear your feedback as usual at the end of the session. So please, if you could complete the quick survey for us to provide us with some valuable feedback. We will select five lucky participants at random for each webinar to receive a free course on our training platform. I will post the link uh, with regards to our training platform where learning with Moderna or Moderna BIM Bootcamp. So without any delays, let's get started. Over to you, Dino. Hello, everybody, and welcome to What's New in Revit MEP Plumbing 2021. I'm your host, Dino, and I'll be presenting this topic. Just a quick uh, item from my side in terms of introductions. Modern is a South African leading design technology consulting firm within the AEC industry. We are trusted partners in solving real world problems with the most advanced design technological solutions, innovations, and deep industry knowledge. If you'd like to deal with us, we are the three main people within the MEP or infrastructure uh, division, our director being Katie McKnight, our infrastructure construction and MEP strategic account manager being Michael Brienkam, and myself, the applications engineer, Dino Karpic. Let us begin. When we talk about Revit 2021, we also talk about the whole platform for every user and what has updated. Right at the start, Take note that the cloud model hosting in Europe is now available. In the past, it only used to host to the USA. So we can now store Revit cloud models on the European data site. And this is good news for the BIM users who want to use the EU hub itself. And please note that location determined by location of BIM 360 accounts. So if you fall under the EMEA, you will by default go into the EU hub. And it's not to say that you can't change it. You are always welcome to use the US hub as well. When it comes to the platform itself in Revit, take note that improved BIM 360 project navigation in the Revit home is now available with better experience of BIM 360 account and project navigation. Also, we can see the difference between recent files and cloud hosted models, which we didn't have within the past. And then we can now as well search for a long list of projects within our Revit home just by simply selecting the BIM 360 icon, which is now available on the Revit project profile page. Right below recent files, you'll see something called BIM 360. When you select it, you can go select your hub, your project, and then the file you would like to work with. And with all of this available, we also have an easy access help link. So, just in case you get lost, you can always click on the help link and it will guide you from there. Let's talk about one of my favorite features is the PDF and image links. Now, we have the ability to link PDFs and images from local or cloud file locations. The new feature here being the cloud file locations. Remember, to those of you who are using BIM360 Docs and Design, you can now store your PDF and image data in your hub and link it directly into your Revit project. 
select multiple rows to reload or remove links. This is a great feature because in the past you had to do this one at a time, link by link, remove and so forth. Also, this is a really nifty feature, convert links to import as needed. So this was a feature introduced into the AutoCAD days of 2017 forward. And what we have now is the same ability within Revit. So we can convert a PDF into lines and hatching as needed within the Revit environment. Also, use the show button to find PDFs or images in a project. And this is a big deal because in the past, you had to look at your model and your sheets just to look for an attached PDF. Now what you can do is select the PDF, show it, and it will show you directly where it is being used. Another item that has changed is the customized workspace within the Revit environment. I'm sure you guys are used to this, where you see the current tabs, architectural, structural, steel, precasts, and systems. Well, what we've got now is we can provide a personalized experience for the way you work based on your discipline and primary job role. What do I mean by this? Well, propose a customized UI that hides unnecessary ribbons that you do not need. And we do this by selecting the option panel and choosing what we would like to show within our tabs and ribbon. And then once you have chosen what you want, you're more than welcome to save or restore the settings and you'll see that you now streamline your Revit workspace. So for example, if you look at my workspace now, I only have architecture and systems that I deal with as I don't deal with infrastructure, construction or structural. When we talk about schedules and it's a nice big item that has changed, we can now make it easier to follow rows across a schedule. And this is by doing row stripping. So in your schedules properties under appearance, you can select and activate striped rows and you can select and activate as well a coloration for those rows. And what happens? Well, it makes schedules 10 times easier to follow, navigate and read. It's also easier on the eyes and then it makes the pleasure of doing anything in Revit much better. Another platform change is we can enable view filters in a view. So we have a new column enable in view added to the filters tab on the visibility graphics dialog box. What does this look like? Well, it is simply just a new column that allows you to enable a filter. So we have a quick disable view filter without having to remove the filter from the view. And this is a nice nifty little feature because we can continue to work the elements that fit the criteria of the filter and enabled by default when a new view filter is applied to that view. So you can toggle on between visibility and enable filter on and off. Another uh, nice change is the ability to do rotation tags with your components in the Revit environment. So this is not just for MEP, but for architectural, structural, steel, precast, and so forth. So the ability to control rotation tag behavior. Keep in mind, you have to do this in the family settings itself. So when you open up the tag, make sure that you enable rotation with the component parameter. And then finally, when you tag an item, you can rotate around the tag uh, as uh, <clears throat> going forward. Another nice one for all of you Dynamo users, Dynamo 2.5 is pre-installed with Revit 2021. So the latest version of Dynamo now ships with Revit. So there's no need for you to maintain multiple versions. Automatically finds and required packages for your Dynamo items and then filter for external application dependencies in your Dynamo scripting. So offers significant improvements in performance and memory management. Remember, the latest Dynamo capabilities are now installed with Revit 2021. More items from Dynamo? Well, we have new Dynamo Revit nodes. So 10 commonly requested nodes have finally been added. These are R joined, join geometry, and is pinned. We have the Revit geometry joining functionality as well. And we have the ability to set elements, pin, unpin, and get statuses of elements uh, as we are doing so. So get hosted elements now with your Dynamo Revit nodes. Other changes? Well, we have consistent line style naming. Yes, so hard, co co sorry, hard coded Revit line styles are now consistent in the brackets 
and appear in the bottom of your list. So like in AutoCAD where you have your line styles that are preset, you now have these line styles preset in Revit and they're different by the brackets above. Also get Autodesk content. So if you go to your insert tab, you have the ability to say or select get Autodesk content and download live Autodesk content that is available within your region. Other additional changes such as sun and shadow refinements have been done as well. And we can improve on the accuracy of shadows in polar locations. For those of you who are using heating and cooling loads within your Revit NEP site, Keep in mind that sunrise and sunset times are now updated with project location. So let's get to the main reason why everybody's here. And these are for the Revit MEP plumbing slash piping features. So the first thing you guys have to take note of is piping and MEP work sharing enhancements. So we have now the ability or previously we had the ability to borrow an element. And what would happen is only directed modified elements are borrowed and it would affect the entire system itself. So that would look like this. If you borrowed an element, you wouldn't be able, uh, your, sorry, your colleagues wouldn't be able to borrow elements attached to that system. Now with the new uh, behavior type, we have the ability to borrow an element upon opening a file, which resolves the previous behavior and circulate syncing requests that resolve what you need. So in essence, short uh, shortest way to say this is the element that you borrow within a system is the element that you are working with in the system allowing your colleagues to work with other elements attached to that system so work sharing enhancement facilitates better collaboration when we talk about NEP and it's not just for mechanical also for piping we have a PNID modeler on BIM 360 docs yes so this used to be a uh, item previous for Plant 3D and Teams, and now it is Plant 3D into BIM 360 Docs. So how does this work? Well, PNID Modeler is now available on BIM 360 Docs, and when you start a project, you are able to go into your Docs using design and start your PNID modeling from Revit. So we replace functionalities previously available in BIM 360 Teams, and this, this is because BIM 360 Teams is slowly being uh, unused and we are now moving into the BIM 360 design phase of items. So the PNID diagrams are available in Revit and you can view the diagram itself as a properties palette within your Revit environment and it comes with a progress of color coded to ensure correct usage and positioning. So in Revit when you're looking at your plant 3D element coming into Revit you can see how it is positioned correctly as well with a color code to make sure that you placed correct. Sorry, that you placed the item correctly. So centralized cloud platform for transfer of project information is made a lot easier now, thanks to BIM 360 design, docs, and Revit. Other items that have changed within piping is a new pipe flow unit. So we have a new pipe flow unit that has been added, cubic feet per meter, uh, per hour, and per minute as well as liters per hour. And this you can find under your project units, discipline piping, and just go look for flow. Under flow, you can then choose the measurement you would like, apply it, and then run it in your tags themselves. So popular units have been made available for mechanical and piping design. In terms of mechanical and piping as well, we have an MEP fabrication extension integration. So, this was showcased in our mechanical what's new, but it is also something that's available in electrical as well as piping, which is a big one. Because we can now use NEP fabrication exports located under the file tab. How does that look? Well, if you open up Revit and you choose files export, you'll see that there's an NEP fabrication job. As soon as you select it, you then export your Revit file as a fabrication job that can go out to your manufacturers. You also have the ability to import items from your manufacturer. So import MEP fabrication jobs on the insert tab. So if you go to the insert tab, you'll find that you're able to import these MEP items. Another item is we can also export job files on the, on the contextual ribbon tab. And if you go to the modified tab, you'll see that when you select a fabrication item, 
you'll have the ability to export that item out to your manufacturer. So you don't have to do a complete system, you can do parts of the system. So fabrication capabilities are now integrated into Revit. So that was what's new for Revit 2021 in terms of plumbing and piping. But there are some news from the modernist side. For this week going forward, we have a whole series of webinar events to choose from. Uh, if you want to see what's new in the other disciplines, you're more than welcome to. Just please go to the link below. Tomorrow, we have our Revit Structures What's New 2021. And for those of you who are interested, we have generative designing as well that's happening as well tomorrow at two, uh, at two o'clock itself. Keep in mind that we do have a competition that is going, so stand a chance to win one of five coupons to a Moderna online course. Complete the feedback form that will be sent to you after this webinar by email. And then for those of you who don't know, we still have the BIM360 extended trial. So let Moderna assist you with the setup of your BIM360 hub to ensure your continuous workflow during these COVID-19 uh, lockdown era. So uh, remember BIM360 Design is a platform for you to use for Revit to connect to the cloud and collaborate with other Revit users. Michael, did I miss anything on my side? No, not that I can see, Dino. So thanks for that. Another great session. I'm quite sure that everybody does agree. There's been some really nice uh, and interesting new functionality that's been added. And uh, I'm quite looking forward to see the development of what Autodesk is going to be doing in the next couple of years moving forward. Some great stuff that's been happening over the last few years. But uh, Dino, if you don't mind, uh, we've got a couple of questions here already from uh, some of the guys. Um, one of them is saying here, Dino, uh, more and more people seem to be using Dynamo these days. And now with plumbing in the MEP space, how can it make our lives easier and faster? Well, there's a whole bunch of things that Dynamo can do for you guys in that essence, especially with aligning your pipes in specific views. Uh, I know that there was a script out there that uh, helps you adjust piping from the soffit uh, to have your pipes run parallel with each other, especially if you're doing hot and cold water or return and uh, supply piping. But if we could get your information, we'd love to contact you to show you a demo of what is available for Dynamo and Revit MEP itself. Fantastic. We'll make sure we get those. Guys, please, if you have any questions for Dino, um, just post them in the chat box, the Q&A, and we'll uh, get Dino answering some more questions. Uh, Dino, he has a, a fami familiar favorite question. What is your favorite feature for the plumbing? Uh, for the plumbing aspects, I got to say it's the fabrication feature, mainly because uh, in the past I didn't have uh, regular fabrication skills, and it's now getting a lot easier to go into fabrication jobs uh, from Revit into cam ducting and estimated MEP. So everything again is set up in Revit and then we just uh, export it out to those platforms and then it's taken from there. Okay, fantastic. Thanks, Tino. There's no, it doesn't look like there's any other questions at the moment. Okay, well then, uh, for everyone who's obviously joined us, we'd like to thank you very much for your time again. I'm sure that you're gonna be using some of these features uh, pretty quickly. Um, again, guys, as I did mention earlier about uh, our YouTube channel, I have posted the link in the comments box. Please go check it out. All our previous webinars are actually on there and a lot more new material will be added moving forward. I've also added the link for the upskilling needs for the guys who are going to be doing the online classroom training and the upcoming course dates. It's been some fantastic courses we've been going through in this COVID-19 lockdown. So guys, please take advantage of it. And before we close off the session, I'd just uh, like to thank you all again. And um, please don't forget to complete that survey. We've been uh, sending out a lot of the emails to the guys who've already won the training sessions by completing the survey. And like we said, the five lucky participants will be selected at random. If you have any other questions, please feel free to get in contact with your relevant account manager, or just give us a call and one of our specialists will be able to help you. And again, guys, we thank you very much for attending. We hope you have a great day further and we look forward to seeing you soon. All right, thank you again, everybody. Enjoy the rest of your day. Cheers, guys. Bye. Bye.